I think inner group dialogue has ignited my just understanding of myself, my partner, my wife. Uh, we're in a biracial relationship and so we're trying to understand various cultures and differences and communication styles. I felt very isolated, I believe, when I first came to the University of Michigan and so it was the first time I was able to build relationships in a space that felt safe but also where I felt like I could talk about issues. That's just been so meaningful to me um, in all aspects of my life. My, my family relationships, my personal friendships, my romantic relationships. I've been able to have really, really difficult conversations with my parents, with my cousins, even with my sister that I don't think I would have been able to have if I didn't have this dialogic approach. So our country is just more polarized than I've certainly seen in my lifetime. I think even more than my parents have seen in their lifetime. Being able to talk about issues that trouble us across differences is one of the most important things in the United States right now. The goals of a, a debate are trying to convince the other side that your viewpoint is correct. And that's not the case with dialogue. In dialogue, you're simply having a conversation to gain a better perspective, to gain empathy. And you might not agree at the end of the day, but you actually are better for it because you've gained that perspective. So critical elements of the dialogic process involves active listening, empathy, and perspective taking. What intergroup dialogue really helped me with was gaining tools, strategies, and ideas in a network of people. So really listening to somebody to understand where they're coming from, not just to refute what they're saying or react to it or respond to it. As we practice intergroup dialogue at the University of Michigan, we have what has been described as the Michigan model, which is a very intentional and deliberate four-stage model of dialogue. And stage one really allows people to get to know one another, to establish trust, so that when conflict does arise, you have confidence in the relationship. Personally, this is where I came to terms with educating myself around my racial privilege and racial identity. So stage one lets you reflect internally and be introspective, but you do that as a collective, as a team. Everyone is doing that together. Stage two really gives us the tools and the language and the shared sort of definitions necessary to move forward together, sort of on the same page. Through that active listening, it gives me a sense of empathy and understanding for where they've been in life, what struggles they may have incurred. And because I have that understanding from them, it also gives us this ability to have a broader perspective. So when you're discussing hot topics, there's obviously these social identities that are wrapped up. And it's not necessarily a debate, it's really trying to gain empathy and understanding and moving the conversation forward. In dialogue, the real currency is my lived experience and my preparation to share that experience with you and my willingness to appreciate your lived experience. And I think by the time you get to stage three, you're really prepared to do that in an authentic way where you're not worried about speaking honestly or candidly because you've already established the trust with the rest of the group. So stage four really opened my eyes into, I now have these tools and these skills of dialogue and facilitation, how can I change that and move that into actionable items? Stage four, I think, is what sets intergroup dialogue apart from a lot of other sort of social justice initiatives because it's not just enough to say, okay, let's like come together and talk about these issues, but it really stresses the importance of action and working together in alliance building and collaborative action. As an outcome, we can hope that they'll be motivated and committed to participating with others in co-creating a better future and a better society than the one we presently occupy. Research that was done that had very clear evidence that we have a positive impact on the three major goals of IGR. That is the goal of integral understanding, empathy, motivation to bridge difference, those relational ones, and action. So I think the intergroup dialogue in the four stages really helped me internalize this lifelong learning perspective that, you know, once the class is over, there's still a lot more to reflect on and to learn. When we are fortunate enough to achieve what our goals are around intergroup relations, it holds the possibilities that we can address even the hardest, thorniest, intractable dilemmas that we face between social groups in this country and maybe even globally.